drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered to you by edipedia world previous lecture i touched upon the different kind of annealing processes that are available today we'll see the annealing processes in uh, more detail to begin with the first thing that we'll discuss is the full annealing process just to remind you in full annealing the heat cycle is basically we heat the body above the upper critical temperature upper critical temperature hold it at that temperature for a certain amount of time and then cool it very slowly right so this is basically the cycle for a full anneal annealing process now exactly speaking the temperature to which the specimen is heated is 30 to 50 degree celsius above the a3 temperature for the hypoeutectoid steel okay so what uh, it means is let me show over here this is the eutectoid temperature this is a1 a3 acm so for hypoeutectoid that is below eutectoid composition we heat it 30 to 50 degree celsius above the a3 line okay so it's heated in this regime fine for eutectoid steel we go 30 to 50 degree celsius above a1 obviously since this is eutectoid 30 to 50 degree celsius above so this uh, range of temperature fine now we discussed about eutectoid and hypoeutectoid steel but this full annealing process is avoided for hypoeutectoid steel it is not normally carried out for hypoeutectoid steel the reason being we take the hypoeutectoid steel above the a3 acm region so suppose we take it to this place then complete austenite is ob obtained now when we start to cool it in this regime we start forming cementite within we start to form cementite phase which forms along the grain boundaries right and this cementite phase is highly brittle along the grain boundaries that can lead to fracturing in addition to that this high temperature can lead to coarsening of grains coarsening of austenite grains thereby the resultant grains will also be quite coarse in nature and the properties will not be very good but the most important thing is cementite phase formation at the grain boundary therefore for hypereutectoid steel we do not go the full annealing cycle we'll see that for hypereutectoid steel we prefer the partial annealing process okay now in addition to this even for the hypoeutectoid steel we do not go to very high temperature we would have gone to let's say 100 degree celsius above the a3 line and still be in the gamma region but we do not do that that is why uh, why do not we not do that we do not do that in order to avoid grain coarsening if we go to very high temperature then gamma grains will coarsen thereby the resultant microstructure which we obtain will also be coarsened microstructure which we do not want fine now what are the advantages or the utility of full annealing full annealing improves the ductility of the material improves the toughness of the material and thereby it also improves the machinability of the steel at hand fine and uh, obviously when you are cooling down whether it is hypoeutectoid steel or eutectoid steel 
we will get lamellar structure that is pearlitic structure too if it is eutectoid then the whole microstructure will be pearlitic if it is hypo eutectoid then partially it will be pro eutectoid ferrite and rest amount will be pearlite and as we know that pearlite has lamellar structure the interlamellar spacing will depend on the temperature as well as the cooling rate how fast we are cooling if we cool at really uh, fast rate then we will get finer pearlite if we cool slowly that is the material has more time then we will get coarser pearlite the main advantage of uh, rather the main disadvantage of full annealing is that it has long annealing cycle that is the time required for annealing is quite elongated time also since uh, full annealing goes to quite high temperature the energy requirement is uh, very high thereby it is not really an economic process now let us see what is partial annealing partial annealing let's uh, revisit what is the schedule this is time temperature axis we heat it above the lower critical temperature but below the upper critical temperature hold it at that temperature for certain time and then cool it quite slowly now partial annealing is normally done for hyper eutectoid steel hyper eutectoid steel we uh, let it undergo full annealing for hyper eutectoid steel we did not want cementite to form along the grain boundaries so we did not let it go full annealing cycle rather we let it undergo partial annealing cycle now partial annealing for hyper eutectoid steel is uh, actually a very good deal how come let's see so what is happening is if we have a3 a1 acm if we have hyper eutectoid steel and if we heat it let's say to this uh, temperature then what is happening is that we are getting if this is fe3c plus austenite zone so if we provide sufficient time then all the ferrite will convert to austenite but the cementite also remains right so we have a dual phase region ferrite plus cementite now this cementite is no longer formed at the grain boundaries rather it is dispersed throughout therefore this does not really contribute to brittleness of the structure rather this provides very good wear properties and it provides a good hardness to the material now this austenite which we have got got this will then undergo cooling and will give the phases as required quite pearlitic phase in uh, addition to the pearlite we'll have cementite which provides hardness and wear resistance to the material okay thereby partial annealing is preferred for the hyper eutectoid steel only partial phase transformation as i said avoids formation of cementite along grain boundaries because cementite is there but it is not forming along the grain boundaries now why is it not normally carried for hypo eutectoid steel it can be carried but it is normally not carried because for hypo eutectoid steel if i heat it to the intercritical range temperature what will happen is that here we have austenite plus ferrite right ferrite plus austenite this ferrite is a very soft phase which uh, will not undergo any transformation only the austenite can undergo transformation during cooling therefore this ferrite will remain as such and it will lead to very soft phase thereby reducing the strength of the material okay therefore therefore hyper eutectoid steel is not partially annealed it is sometimes partially annealed when only when we require to improve machinability why do we do so 
because for machinability we require certain uh, degree of softness in the material right and the ferrite which is present as a result of partial annealing in hypoeutectoid steel contributes to that improved machinability therefore in those circumstances hypoeutectoid steel is uh, partially annealed but other than that it is only hyperutectoid steel which are partially annealed and uh, since the temperature range to which we go during partial annealing is lower than normally lower than full annealing cycles therefore it is a less expensive process okay apart from partial annealing and full annealing we also have subcritical annealing in subcritical annealing what we do we is we heat the specimen below the a1 temperature we heat below a1 temperature and thereby there is no phase change involved what is the advantage of subcritical annealing then subcritical annealing mainly helps in re removing strain right it helps in recovery recrystallization grain growth softening these processes can take place by part subcritical annealing increasing the temperature to higher temperature if the grains are really strained or cold worked it can undergo recovery recrystallization grain growth leading to fine new grains and uh, increasing both ductility and improving not really improving strength but uh, compromising very less with strength alternatively it can also be used to soften the material for machining purposes okay so these are the three types of annealing processes depending on temperature which we expose it to full annealing just to revise is used for hypoeutectoid steel normally we go above a3 temperature or the upper critical temperature partial annealing is normally used for hyperutectoid steel we go in the temperature between a1 and acm that is intercritical temperature and subcritical annealing is below the lower critical temperature and is used mainly for softening recovery recrystallization grain growth there is no phase change in subcritical annealing now let us see another kind of annealing which i have not pointed out beforehand this is known as isothermal annealing and there is a reason to not point it out beforehand isothermal annealing is actually an alternative method of carrying out full annealing okay so what we do in this is this is basically as i said a modified full annealing what we do in this is we heat the body above the upper critical temperature let it austenize completely keep it at that temperature for a certain time such so that complete gamma is formed complete gamma is formed then we rapidly cool it below a1 below lower critical lower critical temperature we cool it below lower critical temperature and we isothermally hold it there and let transformation happen okay and then after that we slowly once transformation has taken place we slowly cool it what is the advantage of this this type of full annealing or the isothermal annealing is basically leads to homogeneous structure because over here we are providing the isothermal annealing we are keeping it at same temperature for a really long time and that results in a homogeneous structure because over here the temperature is already low and cooling further once the transformation has taken place will not lead to a lot of heterogeneity in addition this uh, isothermal annealing similar to any full annealing process leads to improvement in machinability one drawback or one constraint to not using isothermal annealing is for large components or large parts why so because here we have a rapid cooling step this cooling is done really fast 
and if this cooling is done really fast and we have a large component then what can happen is that the outer surface cools very fast the inner core does not cool that fast so there can be a gradient in microstructure because this surface has rapid cooling this has very slow cooling and uh, intermediate re regions has intermediate rate of cooling there by there is a whole segregation of temperature during cooling as well as that reflects in the microstructure and properties therefore isothermal cooling is normally used for not very large components okay so with uh, this i'll close the lecture uh, till now and next lecture we'll continue discussing different annealing processes till then have a great day goodbye